cases uh, really started around school data interoperability between the various software applications you would see in a traditional school. The transportation systems, student information systems, food service, grade book applications, instructional services, um, assessment information, uh, all those different variable pieces including uh, possibly a data warehouse at the heart of that and allowing for data to interoperate and move between those different applications with a one-time entry ideally uh, that then could populate these other applications if they're subscribing to that information. So the origins of CIF was really that what we call horizontal data interoperability and that's the movement in between applications at the school level. It's since evolved now to do more of what we call vertical interoperability and that's taking that local horizontal information and actually through manifest objects being able to move that vertically so a school can do their state reporting automatically uh, and send that information to the state and subsequently states to the federal level. So uh, the use in business case are various horizontals whether at the school, the district, the state, also looking at those other governmental silos, the U.S. Department of Education and now international government agencies uh, on those various horizontals and the vertical information that can move between those. It's an XML-based specification, uh, and it uses HTTP and HTTPS technology to move the data. So it's a unique specification in that it deals with the data model and the data interactions that need to be done in the PK-12 environment, but also what goes over the wire to move that data to one place to another. So it's prescriptive in that nature, and that's really what the K-12 audience wants, including plug-and-play. Uh, and really the way we do it is we have an application, the application has an agent that's built, the agent adheres to the CIS specification, the XML code, that then moves the information through a zone integration server, which is a, just a server, as we call it the traffic cop of information, it doesn't store the data, it basically just moves the data and then publishes that to whoever subscribes to that, either uh, automatically on an event-based basis or on a publish subscribe and, and more batch oriented depending on what mechanism they want to choose to set up the architecture. And now that we have many states now implementing CIF in a vertical statewide either in pilot format or statewide throughout all the applications in the state, you really see it all over the board. Some examples would be of savings would be Wyoming Department of Education where their statewide CIF implementation allowed them to eliminate 23 aggregate reports that schools had to report to them, automated all of those and the estimated savings in time and cost savings for the schools, not for the state, for the schools and all that is $1.7 million in their first year is their estimation to be able to do that. School districts like uh, Duval County, which is a very fast growing county in the United States, they uh, estimate their IT avoidance just in accounts generation uh, will reach about $820,000 a year just in the amount of time it takes to generate those accounts. So it, the nice thing is the scalability. You can solve a very simple problem very quickly or you can scale it up to a very difficult problem like U.S. Department of Education collecting data through uh, really XML which is really CIF mirrors that XML based specification. Some schools have built their own student information system or they've purchased one that's, a, that's no longer supported so it's really a legacy and they can actually build an agent or have an agent built and let it interoperate with the existing ones. So just like schools do, we want to enable them to pop in an application and pop one out the next year so we want that functionality to be able to do that. Well currently the CIF specification because of the original need is focused on the student admin data. I say that's the data needed to run a school, that's the business of a school, just to make sure it operates and then do the subsequent reporting that needs to be done from a, accountability aspects. Um, recently, about a year and a half ago, the board gave the initiative the charge that we want to now enable student learning, which means that you need to build these student information systems, all these other interoperating student admin applications, and link them now to learning standards and learning content, curriculum content, digital content, all those things that's not a core competency of SIF. We do have the publishers involved, they've been involved since the beginning, usually in a subscribe mode to student demographic information, which the CIF spec does a very uh, good job in. But this evolution means that we're in an area that's not our forte. We also have vendors who have built the different specifications like IMS specs, other IEEE specs, SCORM is another one many people are familiar with. So I, we can't reinvent the wheel in the association. Uh, and so our challenge is to identify those players that have the most relevant specifications out there to do what our audience, the K-12 audience, needs to do and then partner with those associations uh, to look at things like Sakai and other organizations who do it really well right now in the higher education space and see if we can model that down to the K-12 space with their unique needs 
and their unique uh, expectations that they have. So that's the challenge going forward is to figure out the other players in the sandbox now and definitely not reinvent the wheel because we don't have the time and education as a whole doesn't have the resources to get that done. So we're really looking strategically at our partnerships and how that might happen.